All right, so how do we have a relationship between books and book reviews? Well, um, I'm gonna say books should kind of stand on their own as entities in the world. And so, yeah, we've got some properties to define them here, but book reviews, they correspond to a particular book. And so what we're, we're gonna define here is a public virtual um, book. And we're just gonna call it book. And so now we have some way to reference a book by, by means of a virtual property on book review. And in fact, um, this doesn't really need to be virtual. For the sake of simplicity now, we'll just make this, um, this property book a book type. Okay, so I mentioned that this ORM can map between c -sharp classes here, book and book review, and some table in a database. Well, how do we take that step to actually um, talk about uh, these things in terms of some database table? Well, what we're going to use is, I mentioned Entity Framework Core, so we're going to manage NuGet packages here. Um, there's also a way to install NuGet packages from uh, the terminal or the command line. And so for that, go ahead and visit uh, NuGet.org and you'll see for any given package instructions on how to install it that way as well. Otherwise, if you're using an IDE like uh, Visual Studio or Rider in this case, uh, we can install packages using this utility. So what I'm going to add to our data project here is a package called Microsoft.NetFrameworkCore, and I'm going to use version 3.1.1 here. We'll go ahead and add that to our project. And next, I'm going to add this package npg-sql-entity-framework-core.postgresql. So we'll go ahead and add this. All right. So with those packages installed. Now what I'm going to do is um, we'll take a look at how we essentially uh, map to some particular database tables. So for this, we're going to create something called our good books DB context. Now, if you've used Entity Framework, um, either in .NET Framework or Entity Framework Core, with uh, some of the newer versions of .NET, then you may already be familiar with a DB context. Uh, but in summary, basically a, a, a DB context, let's go ahead and extend a DB context here and import Microsoft Entity Framework Core. DB context is a way to sort of conceptualize of um, the particular database that we'll be using. So before we get too far into it, let's just go ahead and start with our constructor here. Um, first, we're going to create a param parameterless constructor, and then we're going to create a, um, a constructor that takes in this DB context options object and passes it to the base class. All right, we don't necessarily need to do anything in the constructors beyond um, define them here. But now we are going to make use of our models in the form of defining some DB sets here. So these will be virtual properties. We'll say public virtual DB set. And then this is a generic that takes the type of the data model that we have. So let's say a book, for instance. And we'll call this DB set books. And we'll make an uh, more or less identical one here for book reviews. So I'll take book review type and the table will be called book reviews. So I said table here, uh, keep in mind that these are just properties on this thing called uh, good books DB context, which is just a type of DB context. And so think of DB context as the database, if you will, and DB sets as the tables. Um, in fact, when Entity Framework generates what are called database migrations, um, which are just, uh, it's just a particular way of saying code that um, deterministically controls like creating and destroying database tables or things in database tables, um, as it creates those migrations, it's going to be creating this table books and this table book reviews in our database. 
And you can see that so far we are completely uh, database agnostic here. There's not anything in here that says, hey, we're going to use SQL Server or we're using MySQL or Postgres or anything like that. Um, we're just saying like, hey, uh, I want to define given some database that uh, there are these tables, books and book reviews. Okay, very cool. So now when we go back into our book service, um, we need to actually reference our goodbooks.data project and use this goodbooks.data.models.book. So I can do that through that shortcut that I had there. You'll also be able to essentially add a reference and we're going to select the data project. That's another way to do that. So that's been added. Now I have that um, assembly referenced. I can import from goodbooks.data the book model. Okay, cool. So now we take a look at our book service. It's going to say that, hey, you're not implementing this interface. And with my IDE here, I can implement the missing uh, members. They're just going to have this default uh, behavior of returning a not implemented exception. That's fine. We'll be defining the behavior here shortly. And so it's the responsibility of my service layer to say, hey, I need to get all books. And to do that, I need some way of querying the database. And that is precisely where Entity Framework um, really helps us out here um, by providing um, a set of tools for us to be able to do that in a controlled manner. So importantly, our book service here will need to take a constructor which requests a solar DB, which requests a book DB context or good books DB context. I'm just going to call that DB. And we'll create a backing field here, a private read only backing field, good books DB context DB. And then in the constructor, we'll set that backing field to the DB that will get injected into this service. The other thing that I'm going to emphasize here is that the services that we'll create in our service layer uh, for the purposes of this application will be stateless. And so what does that mean? That means that um, generally speaking, we'll never be mutating the state or even maintaining the state of say like some collection of books for the lifetime of this, uh, this service. So between subsequent requests, any method in this service, um, this this particular instance, an instance of a book service, will have no um, persistent knowledge of some state. This is going to make a dependency injection quite a bit simpler. The constructors of our services will essentially serve to declare their dependencies only. Um, we'll never have uh, multiple constructors here taking um, different values for state that gets set um, on construction. We're never going to have uh, some backing field that's like a that's like a data transfer object that gets persisted on an instance of a service. Um, those types of things, I, I believe, make it um, much more difficult over the long term as an application grows in complexity to understand and uh, really to provide deterministic behavior for services. So I really want these services to act on like a per request basis in a very functional manner. They just need to take some input and provide some output. Any state I want to manage, uh, maybe that can just get passed in on the method that requires that state and then disposes of it and no longer um, needs to track it over a subsequent requests to the same instance. So just a way to kind of th keep things um, a bit simpler. And you might note that that also has um, advantages for scaling uh, various services. So I could then deploy as many services as I want. If, if this was broken out into a sort of like distributed architecture and I had multiple book services running, um, if none of those are managing state, then I can treat them almost as um, just completely separate uh, runners of functions. And there's no complexity in sharing or managing state. Book services just take some input and provide some output. So with the small spiel about uh, some of the advantages of stateless services, let's go ahead and think about how we can use RDB context here to do something like get all books from the system.